Woman refuses to let man board first class, regrets it when she hears remark. Before he could stop himself, the words were out. The woman had been harassing him for a while now, refusing to let him board his plane. He'd had enough. The words hit her like a ton of bricks and she recoiled, scandalized. But how dare she act so indignant? He'd only said what was on everyone's mind. But how had this escalated so quickly? If you've been to an airport and flown at least once in your life, you probably already know what a stressful experience it can be. Delayed flights, long queues, lost luggage, and being singled out for a search at airport security can all get a person's blood boiling. But Emmett wouldn't have a problem with any of these. It was an entitled woman who was about to ruin his day. Emmett was on his way to the Dominican Republic. He had even planned to fly out the day before his birthday so that he had more than enough time to celebrate and unwind when he arrived. But someone had their eyes on him as he stood in line to board his flight. She was determined to stop him. He watched the line shuffle forward, but then he heard a high-pitched voice coming from behind him. A woman's voice said, Excuse me, excuse me, and then he felt her hand on his shoulder. And Mitt turned to find out what this woman could possibly want not realizing that he'd just entered the confrontation of his life. The woman blatantly gave him mid a once-over, slowly and deliberately looking him up and down and taking everything in. It was obvious to her that he wasn't meant to be here. She pointed her chin at the sign above her. Her mouth was almost a sneer as she spat out the puzzling words. But Emmett was mystified. I believe you may be in the wrong place, the woman sneered. But before Amit could correct her and explain that he was indeed flying first class, she told him to get out of line. Then she tried to get in front of him by rudely yelling, let us through. Amit tried to remain calm and diffuse the situation. Was there something wrong with the woman? He looked at the woman, puzzled. He calmly explained that yes, he was meant to be in this line, but she insisted, I believe you may be in the wrong place, you need to let us through. This line is for priority booking. She didn't even try to hide the condescending tone in her voice. Emmett tried to reason with her. Priority meaning first class, correct. But still, the woman wouldn't let it go. But he would understand what she was really trying to say soon enough. Yes, the woman snapped, now excuse me. They will call y'all after we board. Now Emmett was confused. Why was this woman so sure that he was waiting in the wrong line? And why had she singled him out? He was beginning to get annoyed. He pulled out his ticket from his wallet and proceeded to show the woman that he was exactly where he was meant to be. He didn't know this woman anything, but Emmett thought that it would put an end to the altercation. He was wrong. The woman looked scandalized. Her face turned down into an unfriendly frown and she said something loudly to her friends, deliberately loud enough for Amit to hear. He must be military or something, she moaned, passive aggressively. But we paid for our seats so he still should have to wait. Amit couldn't believe his ears. Not wanting to cause a scene in the airport, he mentally tried to think of excuses for her behavior. She obviously had assumed that he couldn't afford a first-class ticket was she really implying what he thought she was? By now, Emmett had a good idea as to exactly what it was that the woman was trying to say. But he didn't want to believe that she was judging him because of his skin color. In this day and age, here was a woman who thought he was a second-class citizen. He couldn't believe it, but he didn't want to draw any rash conclusions. He began to second-guess himself. Perhaps the woman hadn't meant to come across that way. But the more he mulled over her snide comment, the more incredulous he became. He gently explained that he had been waiting in line first and that he wasn't going to move. She would just have to wait like everyone else. Could it be that he was underdressed for the flight? He didn't think so. And looking at the rude woman's clothes, she didn't look like she was particularly well-dressed either. He didn't want to reach the conclusion that he did, but he couldn't avoid the issue any longer and it was his response that had the whole room clapping. Who did she think she was? Emmett turned back to the audacious woman and retorted, nope, too big to be in anybody's military. 
In fact, it was because of Amit's large stature that he had booked a first-class ticket in the first place. A first-class seat would give him the space he needed to fly comfortably. With his thoughts racing a mile a minute, Amit knew even before the retort had left his mouth that it wouldn't be enough to put the woman in her place. Who was she to challenge him about his right to be there? Besides, servicemen and women serving in the military aren't given first-class seats for free either. Why was this sour woman trying to rationalize how he, an African-American man, could afford to fly first-class? And what business was it of hers anyway? By now, bystanders were gathering around. Some were rubbernecking to see what the commotion was about, and others wanted a piece of the action. And Mitt wouldn't disappoint them. Something inside him snapped. Emmett turned back to the entitled woman, and what he said to her next had the entire crowd clapping. The woman needed to be taken down a peg, and he was going to be the one to do it. Even though Emmett was non-confrontational by nature, he needed to stand up for himself. He shot a remark at her, and she looked like she had been struck in the face by his words. Her eyes widened in disbelief as she recoiled in horror. Emmett had told the audacious and judgmental woman that no, he wasn't in the military. He was just an African-American man with money. Only the words he chose to use contained a slur to really drive the point home. The crowd exploded with cheers and applause, delighted by Emmett's witty retort and loving the woman's public comeuppance. But the story wasn't over yet. What Emmett had done was commended by all who witnessed it, in their eyes, he had taken a firm stand against intolerance. The woman had clearly deserved it. He shared the story on Facebook, but he only expected his friends to see it. Little did he know, the situation was about to be turned on its head. Soon, he'd have to retract what he'd said. Viral posts. Within just two days, Emmett's post had been shared over 250,000 times. Now it has been shared by over 300,000 people. Hundreds of comments poured in, praising Emmett's response to the woman's inappropriate behavior. Never judge a book by its cover, one admirer wrote. She is so ignorant it makes no sense that people like her still exist. Enjoy yourself, you handled it well. But soon, Emmett would regret everything. By the time Emmett had arrived at his destination, the post had gone viral. He couldn't believe how many times it had been shared and how many people had commented on his story. So many people from all over the world commended his actions. But instead of being thrilled about the publicity, Emmett was dismayed. Emmett believed that his post had gone viral for all the wrong reasons. This racist stuff is definitely an issue, but this is not the solution to that issue, he wrote. He had had time to think carefully about what had happened while he was on his flight. But he knew just what he had to do about it. It brings me no joy waking up in paradise, he wrote. On his 37th birthday, the day he was meant to be celebrating, he had found out he had caused another person to go through hell. There were also some people who claimed that his original post had been a fake. It was time to address these people as well. The story was definitely real, just like this issue is definitely real, but I now know that I myself should have handled it another way, or left it how it was, and not shared it publicly. Emmett knew that instead of discouraging intolerance in the world, his post was only highlighting it. It was time to be the bigger person. When dealing with people, I always try to stay on the side of right. So to make sure I never do anybody wrong, I try to always put myself in that person's shoes and ask how would I feel if that person did this to me," Emmett wrote on Instagram. And if I was her this morning, I would be a total wreck today. And that doesn't help this situation or her. It only makes them more angry and brings more drama. Emmett decided to put things right. So I would like to apologize again to the woman I had this encounter with yesterday. No matter how wrong your actions, you don't deserve this," he wrote in all caps. I believe if you can't help nobody, at the very least, you should never do anything to hurt them. Unfortunately, the woman hasn't accepted his apology. But if Emmett had a chance to redo that day, he'd choose to be a force for good, even if the rude woman didn't deserve it.